Welcome to the Bold Analysis. The political game hunt by William Ruto might not just have Raila as the first victim, but then this seems to be a fruit-bearing mission towards solidifying his base towards the elections of 2027. And the latest victim to be swallowed by this is the ANC party leader or the former ANC party leader Musalia Mdavadi who is the current Prime Cabinet Secretary. Yesterday, the much-awaited merger announcement that was to be made by Musalia Mdavadi was made. And Mdavadi was categorically clear that ANC and UDA going forward are going to work on a merger plan that will see the two parties merge into one with the possibility of NC being swallowed by the UDA party. Well, some argue that this move by Musalem Davadi might be the end of the political game of Musalem Davadi, but I rather see it otherwise. This move by Musalem Davadi has far-reaching political ramifications or positive consequences, especially on the side of Musalem Davadi more than William Ruto. Welcome to the Bold Analysis. And first, I want us to watch this speech that was made by Musalem Davadi before we continue. Tulipoanza haya maneno ya maja. Muna kumbuka, nilikuwa nikisema tuko kwa coalition. Na hiyo coalition ina mawe tatu. Wanzilishi wa coalition walikuwa UDA, ANC, na Ford Kenya. Na nikasema, tukikaribia 2027, mazingara ya siyasa, ambayo ya likuweko 2022, ya takuwa ya mebadilika tukifika 2027. Na sasa hata hatujafika 2027 September diyo tunamaliza miaka miwili ya serikali hii Haya mazingira ya mebadilika tayari Ya mebadilika It is not going to be the same It is different Kwa hivyo ni lazma tujipange tukiangalia tunaenda wapi because in 2027, the negotiating arrangement is different. It is not the same. It is different. That is how I want to really appeal to you as leaders as we go ahead. Let us support the president. Let us support the president. It's the right thing to do. It is also good for our country. Now, from that speech, the writing is quite clear on the wall that Musalem Davadi has okayed this move. You know, for one thing that first and foremost I tend to feel is that there is a section on our Kenyan laws that requires somebody once nominated to the public service or the civil service to exit any leadership positions that are affiliated with in regards to the political parties in this country. Well, that might not be a good move constitutionally because they, these leaders move, but then they still act in the shadows as the interested leaders of these political parties. And to confirm to you this, yesterday, or a better part of the other day, Msalam Devadi met with ANC leaders under the leadership of the party leader, the Lamu governor, I think so, Isa Timami. And in that meeting, he was invited in a capacity of a guest of honor. But that is just a pretense. It is cry, uh, quite crystal clear that they just vacate these positions or they just leave these positions so as to satisfy the requirements of the constitution, but they run behind the scenes to control these parties. Because if that was not the case, then the decision on this merger would not have been announced by Musalem Davadi, but rather 
he would have remained silent and then let the leadership of the party take its course. But then, to confirm to you also that Musalem David was in attendance in that meeting, I think after the meeting, they did give a press conference. Even though in that, Musalem David didn't speak on the same, but he later chose to speak on a different event. Here is a press statement given by the party leadership in the presence of Musalem Davadi. Of Kenya, ANC, we are proud to merge with the UDA and the way we've been working as women of the ANC, women movement, we want to steer uh, the, this coming uh, 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 party, of, well, immediately we merge with... with okay. Na viongozi wa chama hichi. Na haswa ile lengo la mkutano wetu leo ni kuwa uh, kuashirikisha hawa viongozi wetu ili ile nia na malengo ya kuungana na chama cha UDA nataka Kenya moja na sisi kama chama cha ANC all MCS we are in agreement we are going for march with the UDA and we want to be the first one so that we can get to another election tukiwa na strength kubwa sana We've met here as uh, virtually all the organs of the party, including the Mani Congress and uh, the other leadership within our structure. We've also met with uh, all the elected officials of ANC party, including the MCS and the members of parliament. And uh, we are glad to be here. We also invited our former party leader, who is now the Prime Cabinet Secretary, to also come and say hi to this congregation and we have had uh, a great talk but basically we are moving forward with the merger plans and arrangements between the NC party and uh, the UDA party. Why do some people tend to think that this move by Musalem Devadi will be the end of his political game? Whereas in, this, in my case, I tend to think that that might not be the end of Musalem Ravadi, but well, just by the start of another politi uh, political career and journey. And what are the benefits that William Ruto is said to benefit from this deal? And what is this deal going to have on the relationship between William Ruto and Rigadi Gashagwa that is now clearly out, that is a datified relationship that will not work? This of course, was confirmed by the interview that the deputy president gave yesterday to some vernacular radio, uh, radio and TV stations from the Mount Kenya region. Well, that will come in another analysis. But then, let's look at some of the ways in which Musalem Davadi is said to benefit from this, or William Ruto is also said to benefit from this, but not be might not be a losing game in the end to Musalia Davadi. For one. If you follow the political career of William Ruto, he seems to be working on a pact of awarding loyalty. Even though after awarding that loyalty, it might fade, but then that is what he's been concentrating on. Even with the face of his first cabinet, and even the second one, for the people he reappointed, one thing stood out clearly. That for those who stood with him, he never let them out. And maybe somebody might argue that, what about the people that have been left out, the, out of the cabinet? Well, the government is so wide and expect any day sooner them being given some roles, either ambassadorial or even parastatal roles in this country. Therefore, they might not just go like that. Even so, with the likes of Caleb Kositan, the people who stood with William Ruto, when they lost it in the elections, they were awarded parastatal chairmanship. And that one, with that trend, then there is no way in which Musalem David is going to lose because come 2027, Ruto will still award political loyalty. And that is what he gave Musalem Davadi and Moses Wetangula from the western side when he promised them a 30% of the government. Somebody might also ask, what is the case of Rigadi Gashagwa? Then, there comes the answer that once a kingmaker makes a king, the kingmaker has to be killed because the kingmaker can easily make it easy for the king to fall. That is the political game in that. So therefore, by virtue of rewarding political loyalty, 
Msalem David come 2027 if maybe the relationship between William Ruto and Rigathi Gachagua get sour and uh, and uh, Rigathi Gachagua and Rigathi Gachagua is successful in carrying away the mountain then the possibility of William Ruto looking for a running mate from the mountain come 2027 is just diminishing and might not be there and in that instance if William Ruto can secure a working partnership with the opposition, the, in that case, I mean ODM, come 2027, then, well, there might be optics to have a running mate from the western part of this country. When I talk of the western part of this country, that is inclusive of the real western and the Nyanza region. And in that case, Msalem Davadi's bargaining power comes into effect and into force. Number two. The 2027 game plan here is here. That is that is why Musalem David is so keen on joining ANC and UDA. He even said it that when the date shall be nearing 2027, then we shall be releasing another earthquake. So he was reading definitely the politics at play, and then when the politics present an opportunity that he can capitalize on, which is there right now especially with the ruined relationship between Regatta Gashagwa and William Ruto, then this is the perfect opportunity for Musalem Davadi to move in. And this is also said to benefit William Ruto, who is going to consolidate on the Western region by going back to tell them that, you know, you stood with us in 2022, and these are the, some of the positions that we give, key positions that we give to your people in the government. And therefore, you standing with us in 2027 will mean an increased percentage share stake in the same. Or, in the event that he nominates Musalem Davadi as his running mate in 2022, in 2027, then that one he can easily use to approach the Western uh, vote. That is why we've also seen Musalem Davadi making strategic moves to try to court Raila Odinga. And that is why he was at the forefront. Not just by the virtue that is now the Prime Cabinet Secretary and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. He was trying to quote Raila politically, so that he can have a support of Raila come 2027, and not just 2027, come 2032. Because he's also aware that Raila is exiting, maybe, soon, the national stage politics. And he also moved, this was, was also confirmed by the move to meet uh, weekly for Paranya. Among the Cabinet Secretary, uh, nominees, Secretary nominees, he met weekly for Paranya, and uh, said that they were chatting uh, the way forward on a working partnership relationship. That was not about that. But it was rather about the strategic Western region vote. It seems Mudavadi is keen on consolidating the same, such that he can use that in bargaining for further government positions come 2027, and not just come 2027, but beyond the 2027. But in doing so, Salem Devadi also has to be wary of one thing. The need, the town movement that is gaining momentum in Western Kenya, and especially with the exit of Cleophas Malala, who will now go and join working forces with George Natembea, the leader of the uh, Tawe faction, in order to try to just throw away the uh, Western bloc from Msalem Devadi and uh, Moses Wetangula. But then, in also doing this, I tend to think that Musalem Davadi needs a political lieutenant in this. For some time, you know, when Cleophas Malala was in ANC, he was seen as the political lieutenant of Musalem Davadi. But then when he jumped to UDA, this complicated things. But then now, why do I say that Musalem Davadi needs a political lieutenant? When he's concentrating on his ministerial duties, then he needs somebody to do the political dirty game work in the western region to try to convince them to uh, run or support Musalem Davadi, who is now in government. Because as a prime cabinet secretary or as a minister or as a, a cabinet in this government, he might not find it easy going to do the donkey's work in the western region. So therefore, he needs somebody as fierce as George Natembea to speak for him, to vote for him, to vote for his support, such that what he will remain with Come 2027 is just to go and convince the people when that work has already been done. But then, 
He also, in doing so, needs to convince the Thai movement that he means well for them and for the Western region. Let's be true to each other. It's not, uh, these, these politics are not politics about the people, but are, are rather politics about individuals. There are things that they set to gain as individuals, but the people do not set to gain. But then they approach the people and doing them that once you give us this, then you are set to benefit in this way. Number three, you know that uh, the merger will now move forward or will now proceed. Because sometimes back, uh, one seems or something seems clearly that one Malala Cleophas was a kind of hindrance force to the merger when he was the secretary general of UDA. Because Cleophas Malala knew one thing. NC joining UDA would make him politically useless. That's why he had to kind of seem to oppose the same. Because you remember, he was a member of NC, then jumped from NC and joined UDA, the first one. And that is how he landed the position of being a secretary general of the party. Therefore, having been the secretary general of the party, and then he saw the likes of Msalem Davadi come behind him and get so powerful positions in government, than the ones he got. Then, by extension, Salem Devadi joining UDA together with the NC would mean that the political relevance of uh, Cleophas Malala would be useless in that case. Now that Cleophas Malala is out of the way, then I think that is what has now necessitated the need to revisit the major plan. The fourth reason as to why Salem Devadi is not said to lose from this you know, the move was part of a, wide, uh, of a wider political script or scheme by William Ruto to calm the internal party fire wrangles that are currently in the UDA party. And in the event that Rigathi Gashagwa takes the much talked or hyped exodus from UDA, I know some people will now start arguing that there is no way he's going to leave UDA. He can still remain as a party member of UDA, but then he has a different ideology that he subscribes to. And the, in the event that uh, Rigathi Gashagwa takes that, then the move by Musalem Revadi to get into UDA, he will fill this gap that will be left by Rigathi Gashagwa. And by extension, by William Ruto having Raila Odinga on his side, then... Ruto still benefits from all this. If he has Musalem Davadi in 2027 and he has Raila Odinga, if Raila Odinga agrees that the ODM party will work with the UDA come 2027, then William Ruto is said to benefit so much politically. Even though we don't know what is in Mr. Odinga's mind, he's uh, tried to keep off this off the media on the kind of agreement that they had with William Ruto as to whether it's, uh, it has something in relation to 2027. But then, with that, we just give it time. In due course, it shall come out clearly. Because 2027 is just around the corner. Then also, Ruto's move should now be towards strengthening Musalem Levadi. That is the next move that I think Ruto will take. He will try to strengthen Musalem Levadi more. Give him more powers as he has seemed to be giving him. That is in the event that he might consider Musalem Davadi as the running mate come 2027. Because he has to be a running mate with a voice. He has to be a running mate with a force that can be reckoned with. That is if Mount Kenya jolts away from this. And maybe in his political game plan, he's asking himself, in the event that Mount Kenya jolts away, Raila Dinga walks away come 2027, then maybe the plan might as well as end up with Musalem Davadi. That's why he's also trying to solidify other regions, such as the coast, you know, such that he can have a full backing support come 2027. But then, some argue that uh, Moses Wetangula might also be equally, an equally strong force come 2027. Yes, it's not wrong, but then I tend to feel that the extension to give Moses Wetangula the speaker seat in the National Assembly doesn't give him much space to
to do the politics. If you want to observe this, observe this by the decision that Uhuru Kenyatta gave to Justin Muturi as the speaker of the National Assembly in the previous government. Then when Justin Muturi chanted the way towards Ruto's side, he thought he would ma have much political force to reckon with. But then when he went on the, the ground, he found out that the times he spent on the speaker's chambers consumed much of his political career. Therefore, going back to the people would mean that he had to do a lot of work in order to be convincing to the people. That is the situation that presents itself with Moses Wetangula. So, even though some people argue that Moses Wetangula in terms of geopolitics could be more lawyer than Musalem David because if you look at Bungoma, it is in the heart of western region and Vihiga, it's kind of way towards the area of Nyanza region. That marks the end of our analysis. Thank you for watching.